Today we will discuss on branchial cysts, sinus, or branchial fistula. The branchial apparatus was first described by von Bayer. Known as your branchial anomalies. were described by von Hescherony moving on to your anomalies your branchial anomalies are the second most common anomalies in your head and neck in children most this the second arch anomaly yes most common you have seen that in your first touch second touch third touch fourth touch whereas your fifth touch it disappears this will be your sixth touch your pharyngeal arches develops at about fourth week what happens is that a second arch fuses with the top of the epidermal ridge of that of fifth arch this is called as cervical sinus of this if the fusion is complete this will disappear during your development if it persist it may form a cysts suppose the distal end alone obliterates then it can lead to sinus formation if it becomes infected it may communicate with your external and internal opening what happens is that it may breach your endodermal lining and may open internally and become a fistulous tract So what basically happens is the first branchial apparatus was described by one Bayer. The anomalies are was discovered by Ascherini. Branchial anomalies are the second most common anomalies seen in children. That is, second arch anomaly is the most common. At about fourth week of gestation, the branchial arches tends to develop. The second and the sixth arches ridges fuse, which later on disappears. If it persists, then it may lead to formation of your cyst or sinus or a fistula. this is a case of branchial cyst they present as a lateral neck mass most 70% of children the most common cause of neck mass neck mass is branchial cyst they may present as neck mass if they distal end obliterates they may give rise to sinus and if this become infected it gives rise to fistula You can see very very well appreciated here bilateral fistulous opening. They if it forms a sinus or a fistula, they may present as discharge or pain from the discharge side. So if you see the 
course of your fistula it may open in your anterior the external opening will be in the anterior to your sternocleidomastoid muscle the thing you have to appreciate here is that fistulas opening branchial fistulas opening are anterior to sternocleidomastoid but they are they are seen in the lower third of your neck whereas your cysts are seen upper one third of your sternocleidomastoid these are seen in your lower one third the second difference is that the lining epithelium it's very important that the cyst are lined by squamous epithelium whereas your fistulas are lined by ciliated epithelium now moving on to the course of your fistula i have told that the external opening is anterior to sternocleidomastoid in case of fistula it is lower third whereas in your case of cyst it is upper one third the course of fistula is that it is first it is anterior to the sternocleidomastoid then it goes deep to your platysma then it goes lateral to your carotid sheath then medially it passes between two carotid arteries that is internal carotid and external carotid arteries so very important thing to know while you are doing surgery then it may pass your hypoglossal and glossopharyngeal nerve and finally enter into your reach your ectoderm and enter the tonsillar fossa we have already seen that it is the fistula stack internally after breaching your endoderm it opens into your tonsillar fossa this is because your second pharyngeal pouch develops into your tonsil so now you can understand why the internal opening of your branchial fistula is in your tonsillar pillar basically it is the embryology that you must understand that why the internal opening of your branchial fistula is in your tonsillar pillar so the external opening will be into anterior to your sternocleidomastoid whereas your internal opening will be in your tonsillar fossa based upon this based upon your course bailey has classified into four types in the type one it is just deep to sternocleidomastoid does not involve your caro sorry does not involve your carotid sheath in type two it is lateral to your carotid sheath in type three it passes between your internal carotid and external carotid in the type four it passes and opens into your very tonsil or tonsillar pillar this type 2 is most common natal to carotid sheath and adjacent to your submandibular gland so what is the surgery we do here is that it is called as complete excision of the fistulous tract why surgery is necessary we have already discussed that in cases of cyst in sinus or fistula that the lining epithelium here is squamous here it is ciliary what happens is that the chances of malignancy is that it may develop into squamous carcinoma whereas this fistula or cilia may give rise to ciliary carcinoma whereas that is adenocarcinoma so complete excision is your treatment of choice 
basically what we do is that we do by an approach called as step ladder incision first we will put an elliptical incision at the fistula tract identify we can some some people will inject a dye if you to our visualize the tract internal opening if you want you can inject it depends upon the surgeon first they put an elliptical incision and they dissect it from your posterior margin because if you start dissecting from your anterior end then there is a possibility that you may cut you may cut your this is your anterior this is your if you start dissecting from your anterior end then chances of your, your chances of cutting the tract is possible so you dissect from start your dissection from posterior end and you track track your track your fistulous tract after thoroughly dissecting it you put another incision similar incision to your previous site and then you take your tract from below to up and after your thorough dissection in the second incision site you may enter into your internal opening so basically what we are doing is here complete excision of your fistula strike during this you are, when you are dissecting your uh, your fistula strike care should be that that you doesn't injure any of this vital structures such as your carotids your hyperglossal or glossopharyngeal nerve so this is in short we have discussed about bankel cyst sinus and fistula it was first uh, the bankel apparatus was first described by von bayer the bankel anomalies are first described by von ashroni it is the second most common anomalies of your head and neck in your children the second arch anomaly is most common in the second arch uh, bankel cyst anomaly type 2 is also most common so fourth week of your gestation the bankel arches tends to develop uh, the second and the sixth arch ridges fuses and it is called a cervical sinus office Later on, it will disappear in your life. But if it passes, it may lead to cyst. If there is cyst in the if the sinus, the distal end obliterates, it gives rise to sinus. It be, becomes infected. It gives rise to fistula. Next, we have seen that the location of your bankel cyst and fistula. It is in your upper one third, whereas your fistulas are in your lower one third. And the internal opening of your fistula, if it is a second bankel anomaly, then it is tonsillar. If it is third arch anomaly, then it would be around your thyroid. Cartilage. So the treatment is complete excision of your fistula. Why? Because the chances of turning into malignancy is high. If it is a cyst, it may give rise to squamous carcinoma. If it is a fistula, it may give rise to a ciliary carcinoma. And then 